I wonder where he is. He should have been here by now. Hmm, where did Ed go? Hey, boys and girls, you know what? We're going to be starting Children's Church in just a moment, but I'm waiting for Mr. Ed to show up so we can shoot the video. He'll be here in just a little bit, so let's just hang out. Where is he? That's it. I'm going to call him. Ed, where are you? We're all waiting for you to show up so we can shoot the V Kids video. What? You're not coming? Why? What do you mean you're afraid? Afraid of what? Uh huh. Yeah. So there's a bully across the street that you're scared of? Okay, I get that, but what's that have to do with... Oh, he's across the street in his front yard, and you're afraid to go out into your front yard until he leaves. Uh-huh, okay. Well, look, you know what? You just sit tight and relax. You go online and watch the video today. I think it will help you a whole lot, okay? You just watch the video, and we'll talk later. All right, love you. Bye-bye. Well, boys and girls, it looks like Mr. Eddie's not going to come today. Wow, he's really afraid. I've been afraid at times, too. Have you ever been afraid of anything? You know what? Let's just watch this short video and see some of the things that kids are afraid of, too. Tests. Fire. Tight spaces. When my godbrother um, scares me. Being by myself alone. In the dark. The dark. Bugs. A bee. Spiders. Spiders. Any spider. Black widows. Crantulas. I hate them all. Scared of lions. I guess. Bears. And sharp teeth. Loneliness. Losing what I have. Not having any friends or family. Commitment. That I'll get lost without my parents. Kidnappers. Or having someone break into my house. Wow, boys and girls. Kids can be afraid of a lot of things. Remember last week we learned that God is bigger than our fears when we use our faith. So what are you afraid of? Now, what are the things that you have opportunity to be scared about or be fearful of? See, fear, remember, is that feeling that we get. We look at something and it's really, we think it's really bad and we think it's about to happen, but it, then it doesn't happen. But that's fear. Fear is thinking bad something's going to happen before it does. And I know that these can be really scary times right now, full of change. But you know what? We can know that God is always bigger than our fears and our faith will always win out over fear. So let's answer this question today. What do I do when I am afraid? What do I do when I am afraid? You know, the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7, we looked at that last week. It says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So you know what? Fear doesn't come from God. He doesn't have any. In fact, He doesn't bring fear to us at all. Now, there is a healthy fear, like when you might step out in the road or when you might want to put your hand toward a hot stove and you back off. That's healthy fear. But that's not the kind of fear we're talking about. What that kind of fear is there to protect us. The kind that we're talking about is when you're afraid about something that might happen when you feel unsafe or you feel like you might get hurt. That's the kind of fear that we're talking about. When you think, oh boy, something bad's going to happen to me before it ever even happens. Not the kind that keeps you safe, but the kind that makes you scared out of your ever-loving mind. And you know what? All of us have an opportunity to be afraid. All of us have an opportunity to fear sometimes. Maybe we're afraid of snakes and spiders. Maybe we're afraid of being alone. Maybe we're afraid of a bully like Mr. Ed. Maybe we're afraid of getting injured. Maybe we're afraid of failure or being rejected or being teased. But whatever it is, fear is real and the feelings are real and we have to deal with it. So let's just admit right now, all of us at some time are afraid. But the question is, when you're afraid, what do you do? Well, guess what? God has the answer in his word. In Psalm chapter 56, verse 3, it says this, When I am afraid, I will trust in you, God. Can you say that with me? When I am afraid, I will trust in you, God. See, trust is believing God will take care of me even when I feel afraid. Faith is not the absence of fear or that fear doesn't exist. Faith is standing with God and doing things God's way even when you feel afraid. That's what faith is. You have a part to play in that. 
you got a choice to make. There's something you must do. You must act on your faith. You must act on what you believe about trusting God versus giving into the feelings of your fear. You know, there's a story in the Bible today about a young man named David who had a chance to be afraid and a choice to make. Let's watch that video right now. So part of God's story is about the time David fought Goliath. And it begins like this. David was the youngest of eight brothers. His job was being a shepherd, which meant he spent all day in a field watching sheep eat and roll around the grass. Meanwhile, some of his brothers were off with the Israeli army preparing for war against the Philistines. The Philistines were one of the toughest armies the people of Israel had to fight. So one day, David was taking food to his brothers because his dad asked him to. But when he got there, his brothers accused him of coming so he could watch the fight instead of the sheep. Since David knew in his heart he was just obeying his dad, he didn't mind being misunderstood. Anyway, while David was there, he saw a huge Philistine man, more than nine feet tall, step onto the field between the two armies. He was wearing a thick helmet and armor and carrying huge weapons. His name was Goliath, and he was definitely used to being the winner. David found out that Goliath had been stepping onto the field like this every morning for the past 40 days and saying, Give me a man and let us fight each other. But nobody from Israel was brave enough to fight him, even the king. Well, David didn't like that this giant was intimidating the Israelites. After all, they were God's special family. And because God was with the Israelites, they could have courage in any situation. So David, who wasn't even a soldier, told the king, I'll fight against him. Now, the king thought David was too small, but he really wanted someone to fight Goliath. So he gave in. And David knew he wasn't strong enough to beat Goliath by himself, but he believed God would be with him. So he said, the Lord will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. The king hoped David was right. He even had his own weapons and armor put on David, but they didn't fit him. David decided to go into battle in his regular clothes. That's how sure he was that God would help him. Anyway, David went to a nearby stream and chose five smooth stones to use with his slingshot. Then he walked onto the battlefield to meet the massive Goliath. When Goliath saw how wimpy David looked, he was furious. He thought he'd get to fight the Israelite's strongest warrior. He said to David, Am I a dog that you come at me with sticks? I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals. David might have looked like a wimp, but he was actually really brave. In fact, he was so brave that when he was taking care of sheep, he fought off bears and lions. Because God helped him protect his sheep, David knew God would help him protect this special family. David said, you come at me with a sword, but I come at you with the name of the Lord Almighty. He was explaining to Goliath that God was more powerful than anything. He also added that he would feed Goliath's flesh to the birds, which made the giant even more mad. Then David took a stone, put it in the slingshot, and slung it at Goliath. Goliath didn't even get a chance to swing a sword because the stone hit him right in the forehead and sunk in deep. He face planted straight into the ground. Nobody could believe it. Then David ran over, took hold of the giant's sword and drew it from the sheath. He took the sword and cut off Goliath's head. David carried the head all the way back to Jerusalem. And when the Philistine army realized Goliath was dead, they started running away like a bunch of scaredy cats. The Israelites chased the Philistines, shouting loudly. They had won. God used David, who was just an average kid, to rescue his people. And that's the story of David and Goliath. Wow, that was an amazing story. And the fact is, it's true. It really happened that way. See, much like today, David walked into a situation where everyone around him was afraid, full of fear. Huge, strong soldiers, men of war, were scared of the giant Goliath. And the size of the giant and his angry words were making the people more and more and more afraid. In fact, they were so afraid, they were kind of going the other way. The size of the big angry giant and his words were making everybody afraid, very afraid. People who are strong army soldiers were scared out of their mind. These were God's people who should have known God was bigger. But instead of trusting in God, they listened to the words of fear over what God had to say. When David arrived at the Israelite camp, he had a choice to make. 
he could have let what his eyes saw, the huge size of the nine foot Goliath. Or he could have let what his ears hear, the angry, scary words that Goliath was saying, grip his heart with fear. And he, or he could have choose to act in faith and remember what God had said and what God had done. And you know what? One choice would lead him to cower in fear and run away. The other choice would lead him to act in faith and run toward the giant and be a hero. David chose to see God. David chose to see God bigger than his fears, and he acted. So earlier, when we read Psalm 56:3, it said, "When it says, 'When I am afraid, I will trust in you.'" Did you know who wrote those words in the Bible? David did. He wrote them years later when he found himself in another scary situation where people were after him. So David knew exactly what to do when he was afraid. He knew exactly how to handle it when fear crept in. He was going to trust God. He said, "When I am afraid, I will trust in God." And right now, today, you and I have that same choice. We have an opportunity to be afraid, and when we do, we must act in faith and trust God by listening to and obeying and doing what His Word says. Because as our big answer today says, "When I am afraid, I will trust God." Who is bigger? Like Goliath, sometimes our fears can feel big, really, really big. But just like Goliath found out in our Bible story today, God is bigger than our fears. Hey, boys and girls, let's check in and see how Mr. Ed is doing. Hey, Ed, how are you doing? Uh huh. You're feeling better? Awesome. Did that help you? It did. That is, so, I'm so glad. I'm so happy for you. I'm, I know it helped you, and I hope it helped the boys and girls at home too. You know, we're learning that when we're afraid, we trust God, who's bigger, and that's really cool. All right, you know what? I'll talk to you later, Ed. Love you. Bye bye, boys and girls. Aren't you glad that, that helped, Mr. Ed? Right now, I want you to get up off your seat, get up on your feet. One of the ways that we can trust God, one of the ways we can act in act in faith when we're afraid, is by praising God. So let's begin to praise God now. Hands for Him is going to come out, and let's get ready to praise Him. All eyes on you. All eyes on you. Everything else fades away when you step on the scene. In my heart. Everything I do, everywhere I move 
move, let your love shine through So all the world can see you've taken over me Let me be a reflection of your truth In turn feel so silly. It wasn't a bully at all. It was just a plastic bag in his front yard. And I, uh, hello? Where, where, where is every, oh, uh, I'm ready to start the video. We're going to do the whole kids video thing, right? Am I, did, did I miss it? I missed it, didn't I? Uh, 
Well, uh, I guess I'll just, uh, I'll go back home then. Uh, yeah, I, uh, 